Hey guys, back out in the shop. We've got the uh, 65 Chevelle back in and we're going to get working on the wiring installation on this car. Uh, the owner already purchased a wiring kit for this vehicle and it's a universal kit and it's made by the uh, Easy Wiring Company. Now I have installed one of these kits for him prior and they're Again, it's a universal kit, so it can be used across the board uh, on a GM car, Ford car, or any Chrysler product. And essentially what it does is you get your complete wiring front to back. All new stuff. As you can see, everything's looped together in different sections. It comes with a new fuse box with the flasher cans already integrated into them. It's got a headlight circuit breaker and this kit here is a 12 circuit kit. Uh, they have them with even more circuits if you needed them because this one doesn't have um, different separate fuses for like power windows, or power seats, or any a lot of different power options that you might have in the car. But it does indeed double the amount of circuits that this car has originally. This car's fuse box has six fuses in it. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, has twelve. So you got twelve circuits as opposed to six, six circuits on the um, original system. Now these wiring harnesses, there's a lot of company out, companies out there making different wiring kits. Um, like I said, I have used one of these before, and I've not had any issues with them. The wires, you'll notice if you use wiring from different companies, the wire is almost the same. Um, all the wiring, and it's going to be kind of hard to see on camera. Let's see if I can get it to come up on something here. Oh, here we go. See, the wires are marked. All the wires are marked as far as the different circuits that they're for. So along the entire length of the wire, so as long as this wire is, it's stamped on the wire what it's for. Whether it's a tail light or a turn signal or a license plate light or a, or a headlight or wherever it's supposed to go, it's marked on the wire from the start to the finish. So it makes it kind of easy as you're laying it out to know which wires are which. Which ones you're going to need, which ones you're not going to need. So the system also includes a relay for the headlights. And this is a headlight relay. And it has a couple that are um, already set up with new plug and play ends on them. And this is for the headlights because they kind of figure you're going to use a GM style headlight so it comes with the GM uh, headlight plugs and this is for the dimmer switch, the three prong dimmer switch all these wires here with the little silver connectors on the ends they're for the turn signal switch that comes off your column, your turn signal, your horn and it does come with these connector ends that you have so you can plug in your new wiring harness and take the wires out of your existing column uh, connector and install them into the new connector here so everything will plug together real easy comes with new headlight connector ends uh, this car I believe is a four headlight system so we're going to need uh, two more of these that are that are two prong. This is for the alternator and this also has a high amp alternator wiring kit in it and that they tell you how you're supposed to install that if you're installing a high amp alternator. Uh, what else does it have? It has small harness for your neutral safety switch and backup light switch and it comes with a small package of crimp connectors. So you've got pretty much everything you would need to install this kit in the car. 
Now, when these uh, wiring harnesses are originally put in the car, where this fuse block bolts to the firewall, it has on the back side, the factory ones, has a uh, connector. So you'd have a, a molded connector that would plug right into the box on the, um, on the firewall. Well, this kit doesn't use that. It just uses a grommet that'll pass through the firewall. So what we'll have to do is the same area that the wires go through now on the firewall. We'll go ahead and make a little plate for there and we'll install the grommet and pass the wires through there. So the uh, this is going to cover the entire car front to back and so it'll give the car new updated and a nice clean wiring system. It's going to eliminate any rat's nests you may have under the car. Um, it'll get rid of extra wires you don't need. It may this may have circuits in it that you don't use like it does come with wires uh, for an electric fan, electric fuel pump, things of that nature are already in these kits and if you don't use them you can coil the wires up and stow them up underneath the dash in case future use you may install those items. So one of the things that we're going to have to do we do have to disassemble some more of this car. I already have the dash all apart from when I did the uh, body work and repairs uh, for the lower window channel and fixed the dashboard on the other side I left everything out as far as the instrument cluster goes so I don't have to take any of that apart I will have to pull out the sill plates here because most of the wiring harness will run along here on this side of the car and go up under the back seat and then up over the, the rear axle so I'll probably pull the driver's seat out. I'm going to have to take the back seat out uh, just to make it easier to work on because I'll be laying under the dash some so I'll be able to, to move around in the car a little easier uh, to get everything installed up under there. And then we can go out into the engine compartment and you can see the factory wiring harness comes out over here. It's kind of hidden underneath the the inner fender I believe originally they ran along the outside of it they weren't kind of tucked up under here it's a little neater installation when you tuck them up um, on the inside of the, the fender and your headlight all the headlight wiring is out here too so and your horns down here so majority of what we're going to be wiring is over here and on this side is where the battery connections go um, I don't think there's any other wiring that goes on that side. This car has an amp installed in it, so it does have a power wire here that runs back to the amp. That'll be staying. And obviously this car has a one wire alternator installed in it already. It doesn't even have a connector on it there. Well, that's real good. Um, it's got HEI ignition in it. So we'll, ha we'll run uh, just a single 12 volt wire out to the distributor to power that. We'll have to power up our, um, our windshield wipers. Like I said, it is a complete kit. It does come with all the circuits needed with the car originally. Plus it does add some that allows you to put some accessories in the car. Again, such as power windows, power seats, electric fuel pump, air conditioning, um, all the modern upgrades that people like to put in these cars so that's what we're going to get into with this car this week uh, probably take a couple days to go ahead and go through everything get it wired up make it nice and neat tuck everything in attach everything so it's not flopping around in the car because the last thing you want is your brand new wires going up and down the road moving up and down rubbing against metal and then all of a sudden it rubs through and you get a short so that's one of the reasons for installing the new harness is to eliminate any of those issues that the car may be having uh, with shorts or bad grounds, lights not working. Once everything is replaced, all the electrical in this car will be working just as if it was a new car. So we'll get into that and uh, start the disassembly. I'm not going to go ahead and document replacing every wire and circuit in the car. I may do a couple just to show 
how you're going to terminate um, the new wires into some of the original light sockets uh, that you have to do with these and if there's any sockets that need to be replaced of course we'll get new ones while we're doing this but um, a lot of it's just it's going to be a lot it's a very it's a tedious job so and it's kind of boring so you're not going to want to sit here and watch the whole thing be done but I will document a couple circuits so you can see just how crimp connections are supposed to be done properly um, and again how you gonna how you tie the original harness in places with the new harness that's going in with some of the connections that need to be done so we'll get going on this okay got the seat out basically the seat was being held in by two bolts and this car has had a floor pan put in it but it is not a high quality floor pan because the mounting holes for the seat should have nuts or plates reinforcement plates welded to the bottom sides of the pan so you can you don't have to lay under the car and hold a nut and reach up inside the car and hold the bolt to get the seat out now upon removing the carpet you never know what you're gonna find and I found some free electrical tape whoa 89 cent find of the day All right, I'm beginning disassembly and removal of the original wiring harness, which is a mess. And I found something that I just don't like. See these? Don't be this guy. These are not for your car. They're for your house. Don't put these in your car. Put a proper butt joint in when you have to splice into a wire. Because these will eventually work themselves loose and either cause a short or whatever's connected to it's going to stop working. Okay, after about two hours I was able to get the uh, original wiring harnesses out of the car front to back. The only thing that's left in the car is on a, these older GM cars there's a uh, harness that runs under the carpet that's flat and it connects to the dash harness and runs to the back in the trunk area just below the where the floor pan goes over the rear hump uh, for the rear lights and I'm considering keeping that harness because it is it's very flat you know it's a flat harness whereas the other one you know if I use the new wiring all the way to the back it's not going to be as flat so it, you could possibly feel it under the carpet but probably not I have to think about what I'm going to do with that yet. But anyhow, we got all the harnesses out, and basically, you got four systems. We have the dash harness that includes the fuse block, the original fuse block with its six puny circuits. And then this is the, the uh, firewall bulkhead connector here. And this is where the other two harnesses connect to that go out into the engine compartment. And this is where um, this should have a seal on it. This is so this will be there's a big hole in the firewall now, a square that I'll have to make a patch for and fill that in. And then this harness here, this is what they would call the engine harness. So this one connects to that bulkhead connector and it goes to your starter signal and it also has um, oil pressure sending unit and it goes out to the water temperature sender there's another wire here that I'm not sure what it was for because it wasn't connected to anything this one here was just kind of sitting in the header melting and I believe this goes to where the alternator was and then this harness is the rear light harness so that connects to the flat connector in the trunk runs to the dome light and both tail lights and to the uh, fuel sending unit and the license plate lights and backup lights that harness there is the front light harness and it connects into the bulkhead connector runs up to the front 
that goes to that has the alternator harness in it so that would go to the alternator the original regulator goes to the front headlights both the horns and the front turn signal parking light assemblies so basically the new system has the same thing it's got four different loops of wires that will replace all of this mess here with all new wire plus extra circuits so there you have it there's all your original 1965 GM wiring out of the car tomorrow we'll start putting the uh, the new harness in and running our new circuits out to where they need to go to hey guys back out in the shop continuing on with the Chevelle wiring harness installation and we're going to talk about this harness here for a moment uh, mainly because this harness is a universal harness it came from the easy wiring company and it's it's a it's a good harness I'm not saying anything negative about the harness but again it's a universal harness so if you're buying this harness for a specific model car you may run into some issues which is what I'm running into with this one so the harness doesn't come with a lot of plug-and-play connectors it's mainly just dead-ended wires and they send you a pack of um, connectors so in order to make your factory connectors like this one work with this harness you need to remove the original wires out of the harness it's, this is the uh, this is the ignition switch plug and this harness too it's based it's really based off of 70s on up GM wiring harnesses because the uh, plugs plug connectors that they give you with the harness are actually for a later style ignition switch that is column mounted this ignition switch is dash mounted so they will not work on this ignition switch a lot of the other connectors that don't come with it is I've got the dash wiring the lights that light up the dash none of your light sockets come with the harness so I have to use all the original harness from the car and to a lot of the other connectors if you want all the factory connectors back in the car you have to remove them and install the new wires into those factory connectors now, I like to do my wiring harnesses as close to factory as possible so I'm going through all the wiring so I've got the easy wiring diagram uh, supplied instructions but I also have a factory wiring diagram so I can compare the two and make sure that I'm getting all the new wires in where they need to go one of the places that is a problem is here this is the uh, connector that goes on the steering column it sends the wires up to the turn signal switch and your horn button this is different than what comes in the kit the kit again it's set up for uh, late early 70s on up GM style it's a flat connector this uses obviously a curved connector and the terminal ends are different the terminal ends on the new wires will not match up with these and they do not supply you the terminals to connect into the ones that are already installed on the wire so they're assuming that your car that you're using has either an aftermarket I did it column or it's a later GM column and it's got the flat blade connector on it and you can just take those out and plug them into their connector block that they supply I can't do this with this one so I'm going to have to splice all my wires together on my curved connector here so that I can reuse this connector to connect up to the steering column. This is just one of the things if you are not good at reading wiring diagrams and doing wiring in cars and you're going to buy an aftermarket wiring kit get one 
that is made specific for your car. There's plenty of them out there. They'll cost probably three or four hundred dollars more, but they'll come with all the right connectors on the ends. They'll have all the right things that you need. It's plug and play. You pull your old harness out, you put their new harness in, and everything will connect up. This being a more universal kit, it's much cheaper. This kit was about two hundred dollars and it does give you everything you need for the car and then some because it's got a lot of extra circuits in it for different things that you could add into the system but again to make it work with all the factory original connectors you've got to do some research and you've got to do a lot of wiring and splicing and making old connectors work with the new wiring Okay, we talked a little bit about uh, reusing the factory original connectors. This is the connector that goes on the brake pedal switch for the brake lights. And the way you take these apart, you see the terminals are in here. And there's a little uh, section of it here that sticks out from the flat part. What you need to do is take a flat, a very thin, flat screwdriver or a piece of metal and you slide it down inside of that part that sticks out and there's a little tang in there once you push that in then your connector pulls out as you can see right here is a little little tang and when it's pushed up like that it slides inside the connector and it locks in yeah, you know, it's locked in. There's a little plastic uh, section in there that it catches on, so it can't pull out. <clears throat> but very easy to take out again. Thin blade screwdriver, stick it down inside, push down on it, and it comes right back out. Now, in order for me to make <clears throat> the new wires usable in these old connectors, I have to get new terminal ends. And they sell these at any auto parts store. It's a GM style flat blade. Uh, female type connector and you can see on the back side it's got the little tang that will lock into the <clears throat> to the factory connector so this is this is one of the things you have to do if you want to use all your original style factory connectors with a universal harness all right wiring harness is about ready to go in the car probably taken me a good six hours of working through uh, factory service manuals and the instruction book for the wiring harness to get everything figured out there's some parts of the original harness that need to be incorporated into this universal harness in order to make it work right uh, especially like your heater controls Heater, this goes to your heater control, which then goes to the blower motor resistor. And then you got to run a blower motor wire, which they don't give you in the harness, the new harness. The original wires that go to your door switches to work your dome lamp, you have to use that. Uh, of course, I had to use the original bulbs, all the bulbs for the instrument wire, instrument lighting. Uh, headlight switch and I've got everything separated out I had to do some splicing and dicing with the original steering column connector so everything will just plug right in there and then I've got my engine harness and the front light harness separated out and then this is the body section. This all goes to the tail of the car. I'll, I'll work on this once everything's in the car. So we got it all ready. Again, I can't stress this enough. If you're not good at wiring, if you can't read wiring diagrams well, if you don't have any patience, don't buy a universal kit. Buy a kit that's made for your car. It's plug and play. You take the old one out and you put the new one in. All right, inside the Chevelle, I pulled up the carpet in this car and found the floor pan's a little rusty in this car, but there's no holes in it, and it still seems pretty solid. 
So we're going to treat it with some Pour 15 Rust Encapsulator to keep it from getting any worse. And uh, we're going to leave that floor pan alone. But uh, on the wiring installation, we're about ready to put the wiring in and mount the fuse box. I made up a block off plate for that original square hole in the firewall just out of a piece of uh, aluminum sheet that I had here at the shop. And I cut it a little oversized so that I could put some seam sealer around it and make sure it's sealed up really well. And uh, I've drilled a hole through it so I can run the wires out to the front lights and the engine compartment light uh, wiring can go out through there. The grommet that they give you with the kit is so large that you could fit every different circuit of wiring that they give you in this kit through the hole. I don't understand why they do that. You only have a certain amount of wires that are going out front. So I went out to uh, my local hardware store and got a smaller sized grommet, one that would fit the thickness of the amount of wires that I have to go out there. So I get a nice and tighter seal. You want to try and have everything on your firewall sealed up as tight as you can. It keeps out hot air. It keeps out engine smells if you have oil leaks or any kind of other um, you know you want to keep everything from that's in the engine compartment in the engine compartment and not inside the cab of the vehicle especially if you've got an exhaust leak up front that could be bringing carbon monoxide fumes inside the car which is never a good thing so we're going to go ahead and mount the fuse box get the wiring laid out into the car Pull all my wires up through the front that need to go in and start getting things connected up. Continuing on with the harness installation in the Chevelle. I've got the fuse box in, screwed onto the firewall, and the relay for the headlights is in. All the wiring is kind of routed where it needs to be at. I've got a couple things plugged in, but uh, I wanted to get finished with the rest of the system. While we had the carpets pulled up, I went ahead and treated the floor pan where it was rusty with the Pour 15 to slow down and encapsulate that rust. It really wasn't that bad. It was more surface rust than anything else. So I poked around on it. There weren't any holes in it. So we just encapsulated it to keep the, the rust from spreading. So we'll go ahead and continue on with the wiring, getting everything run. This harness here is what's going to go to the rear of the car. So I have to run all that to the back for the dome light and fuel sender gauge and all the rear tail lights. Get all those hooked up to the uh, sockets that were here in the car. And then under the hood, we've still got to we've still got to hook up everything out under the hood. What you doing, Ashton? So we got our light harness here and a battery feed for the uh, amp gauge and then the harness wires here to go over. We'll go to the temperature sender and to the alternator down to the starter solenoid and then we have to run a power wire. We've got one wire here. This one's for the, the wiper motor. That'll power the wiper motor up. And that should leave everything in the front hooked up. And uh, hopefully we'll have this finished up here either later today or if not tomorrow morning. Continuing on with the Chevelle wiring. Uh, we're up to the front getting the lights all rewired in and the headlights, parking lights. I've run my wiring harness from the left side to the right side for those lights, which also includes the um, alternator wiring for the uh, alternator and power wire that goes in for the amp gauge. This is for the amp gauge and not the alternator. And it draws power right from the battery. Just want to talk a little bit about some of the connections you make with these kits. I'm having to reuse a lot of the original connectors just so everything looks more factory um, and using the crimp connectors it's important when doing a crimp connector to use some shrink tubing also the shrink tubing does two things it seals up the crimp connector to keep moisture from getting inside of it 
and it also keeps the wires more stable in that crimp connector so that they're not moving around as much and you have less chance of a failure at that connector as you can see with these here I've got all these got all these connectors done they're crimped and then they're heat shrunk so that the wire stays tight inside of that that connector so that's one of the things you want to remember with these kits because most of these kits that's what they come with is uh, crimp connectors now you can take the crimp connectors apart and solder everything but it's really overkill when you're doing a project like this uh, the factory connectors are different I had the factory style connectors that I used here for the um, water temp sensor and it uses the original style connector on the end that's crimped and then the this type of uh, an end there looks like factory connector so trying to make things look as close to factory as possible on this car so we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the the front harness like I said I got these lights done here I got to do the passenger side lights then we're gonna move inside the car get the dash set in put a battery in it and see what kind of smoke comes out of it or hopefully no smoke I should say and uh, make sure everything's working as far as the wiring to the starter alternators charging and that'll leave just the rear harness to do for the lights and put the uh, wiper motor back in the car and get that wired up all right just going to bring this video to an end we've got the wiring finished up here on the Chevelle for the most part as you can see the wiring harness is out here run for the engine and then the light harness comes up through the fender well so it's nice and hidden uh, horns are plugged in all the lights are plugged in um, just a couple things I got to finish up on it the headlights aren't working because the dimmer switch is bad horns not working because the horn relay is no good and I've got to check the dome light bulb because it's not working and also need to put the uh, wiper motor back in and hook power up to that uh, and then I'm going to put some sheathing on the harness and some p-clamps to hold it to the firewall so it's not moving around keep it nice and tidy but for the most part it's finished up I've got the dash all back in all the gauges are hooked up and the uh, radio is wired for the most part got the heater hooked up uh, did a couple other things while I had it apart I welded some nuts to the floor pan to mount the seat so you didn't have to reach under and undo a, a nut with a bolt and got that straightened out went ahead ran the wiring harness to the back and we got got everything finished up back here wires are run up they come under here they just need to be tied up with some wire ties bulb sockets brake lights work turn signals work so everything's working for the most part just a couple things that I and I know what's wrong with them but that's going to close this video out for the wiring on this Chevelle and hopefully uh, it was informative if you're attempting to do wiring new wiring in your car again I'm going to stress this if you're not good with wiring harnesses and you're not good with running new wires making connections incorporating old into new buy a harness made to fit your car the extra four hundred dollars you're going to pay over the price of a universal kit is going to save you time aggravation and you're eventually going to take it to somebody and the, the amount of money you spend paying somebody to get this wiring a universal kit fit into your car is going to outweigh the cost of buying one that will plug and play so again just buy one that's made for the car that's why they make them it's a it's a lot nicer installation too so well again if you have just found my channel 
and you found what I'm doing here interesting, uh, check out my other videos. I've got a lot of stuff going on in the shop. Uh, things are coming down to the wire. i got a couple more projects in that have to get started on along with these other ones that uh, are ongoing. So again, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button. Hit the down like button if you didn't like this one. Uh, leave me some comments. Share these videos with everyone you know. Somebody that might be attempting to do some wiring. This may change their mind on what they're going to do with their project. And uh, help my channel grow so I can keep bringing the videos to you. Thanks again.